Okay. 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 Do you want to call the meeting to order? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, it is October third, five thirty p.m. I'm calling the meeting to order. We have Chris Stanton here, Bennett Johnson, myself, Hannah Smith, and Connie Redman. Comment. Are there any attendees online besides Mara? Okay. Um, before we get started with the agenda, I wanted to give something to Connie. She was nominated and won an award from the State Oregon Main Street. Mm -hmm. It is Volunteers on Main Street Award for your dedication to downtown Estacada Commission. Um, and it says any money. <laughs> no, no money. You just, you just get this great award. Um, uh, you are the glue of downtown Estacada's promotions committee, and you always step up for any event the commission holds, ready to give your time and energy. Your tireless advocacy for the community is of measureless worth to Estacada. We are grateful for your efforts and the difference you make. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So awesome. Thank you. You want to do a review and adopt the minutes from yes. the Mount mm -hmm. Ross meetings? That'd be um, great. Does anybody have, was any, everybody able to review them? Yeah. Okay. Um, can I make a motion to adopt the minutes from the last two meetings from July and for June, June for and July. 6 30, 22, and 7 25, 22. 6 30, 22, and 7 25, 22. Second. All right. All in favor? Okay. Great. And then, did you right. want to make uh, amendments to the agenda? Um, you had emailed late Thursday night. I think we have we have it all on there. Bennett, were you able to look at the agenda? Yeah. And see it. I mean, is there anything that we need to add right now? Um, you had emailed two letters that you wanted to add as amendments to the agenda on Thursday? Yes. And so you just need to uh, make a motion to add those as amendments to the agenda. All right. Okay. So go ahead, Connie. Um, what are we making a motion to, to amend the add. agenda to show to, to add, uh, add two draft letters? Yes, to, to the city council. Yes, letters to the city council, and it said also for uh, this the co chair. Are we adding that to the, mm -hmm. to yeah. the agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second that. I okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we we did get an additional um, committee application today that was submitted, um, not in time to include in mm -hmm. your packet, but Mara can share it on the screen. And we have all three applicants for the committee vacancy here. Oh, yeah. So um, you guys can interview them. You have their applications, except for the most recent one in your packet. We have three or two? Three. So you have two in your packet, and then one was just received, not in time to include in the packet. So Mara will share it on the screen when we get to that. I need to be given permission to share my screen, please. Yeah. So you just just call someone up and then I set up the microphones over here and they can sit over there. Yeah. Well, the first one on here is Shane. Do we want to have Shane go first? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to come up and sit right there? Yeah. yeah. Either yeah. seat. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey. Nice to meet you. I'm I've never done this before. So. So okay. Is there anything specific that we want to ask? 
Well, I have one thing. So, um, but actually this has to do with something that we're gonna talk about later in the agenda, which is a big problem that we've had is getting people to that join the commission and then they don't come to the meetings. And so, um, so without having that conversation about when we're gonna have the meetings, then I think it's um, difficult for me to ask you my question, which is, are you gonna come to the meetings? So, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that's my intention. <laughs> We may change the time and day. So, what's your schedule like? I have your typical nine to five. I have a little daughter, but uh, I have a family home, so my wife will be home. But I'm not okay. sure when I got to come to the meeting. Okay. And why do you want to be on this? Um, I'm interested in seeing how the progression of the city happens. Obviously, there's a lot of growth happening here, and I've been involved in real estate for quite a while now, and um, I've been. I really want to get involved in the community that I live in. Um, I purchased a home over here in one of the newer developments. Um, I know for some people it's you know not a great thing, and for some it is. But uh, for me, I'm grateful to be able to mm -hmm. buy a home in such a beautiful location, and I'd really like to be a part of uh, the committee and to see how the um, city plans on growing. And why this commission instead of another one? Uh, I noticed that in the description of it, you talk about um, the commercial economic growth of downtown. Um, and, you know, with my experience in real estate, I feel like that's where my skills would be more valuable mm -hmm. instead of any other. Have you been on any other committees or involved in any other um, events in Estacated? Not an estimated, no. Um, I'm fairly new to town, so I haven't had the opportunity to yet, but um, I've been a part of not committees, but a lot of hearings for uh, some of the coastal towns because one of my previous employers was Pacific Seafood there in Clackamas. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to manage all of the real estate for that company and the owner. And um, one of our goals was to convert a lot of different types of real estate to workforce housing. So I got involved with the cities and uh, planning commissions to see the hearings and, um, and communicate our goals and to figure out what the city's goals were to make sure that they were cohesive. Okay. Awesome. Have so you I read have... our strategic plan? I have a whole thing right here that I'm waiting to read. <laughs> I read a little bit of it. I haven't had the opportunity to read it all, to read it all yet. Um, well, thank you. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. All right, um, Ivan, you want to come up here? Yes. And the next one, <clears throat> Yvonne. Mm -hmm. It's Yvonne or Ivan. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about a little bit about yourself and uh, what you want to do. So I talked to a few people for a while. <clears throat> so I have a business mm -hmm. that I opened up in town, uh, Bull Vlasic, mm -hmm. and it's our second year. And um, the reason why I wanted to join this community is to kind of enhance more of the, the businesses and stuff and bring more tourists and stuff like that. That's what awesome. this committee is what, what you guys do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have you been involved in anything else in Estacada? Like committee wise? Um, I used to work at the grocery store for 12 mm -hmm. years. So mm -hmm. I know the community a lot. And then yeah. I kind of have the knowledge of like a lot of what the community wants. Because usually that's like the gossip. Yeah, and that store so people will tell me oh we want this we want this so mm -hmm. just over 12 years like I yeah. gained a lot of knowledge and and um just stuff like that so and you grew up here yes I grew up here we my family moved here I think 1989 I was born in 88 so we moved here 
uh, went to school here, graduated, graduated in Eastern Oregon, and then opened up my business here. Cool. Any other questions? Have you read our strategic plan? I was trying to, but every time I, I would click on the link, it would, I think it was like corrupted or something. Yeah, we had some website issues. It, it was mm -hmm. opening everything as wingdings. And so I sent it to our, our IT department. It should be fixed soon. Yeah, I was yes. trying to, I was so trying to get that. all them to read up everything yeah. before I got here. Yeah, but I tried on my phone, my, <laughs> my laptop, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to be ready. Yeah, it wasn't you. No, don't worry. So the same question, are you going to be able to come to meetings and why this commission instead of another one? Uh, just be, I, I feel like because I opened my business here and this committee helps to promote the businesses and I feel like that's the, the best committee to, to join. And um, right now I overstaffed my SDK location because I'm looking to expand. So I'll have enough staff. So to come to the meetings and mm -hmm. stuff. So, so I'm, I'll have enough staff that I can schedule whatever days I need to come here to, mm -hmm. to dedicate it. Yeah, you're close, huh? Okay, awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Mara, do you want to bring up the other application? I can't see your name. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Juan, okay. You want to come up here? I, I'm sorry, I can't see it up there. I'm looking at the wrong. Hi, y'all. I, I have shared it, but it, it doesn't show. Sorry. It's okay. Oh. No, we got it. We see it. It um, shows. It's just kind of small. Okay. Um, how are you? Really good. Thank you for asking. Good. Good. Um, so, so, what? Give tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the committee. Well, my name is Juan Luna. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. And I'm co-owner from Kenland's Dogs mm -hmm. down the street. And then um, I work. I work in this industry, food and beverage, for several years. Mm -hmm. So my strongest is do events, banquets, and then um, we opened a location, this one here, uh, almost two years ago too as well, mm -hmm. with Ivan. And thank you, Ivan. Mm -hmm. And then um, we, me and Ivan, we try to be more involved in, in events and all that kind of stuff. We can help this community growing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... That's our intention. Yeah. And have you looked at any other committees? No. No. Just I never. Work. No, I don't even know how to work. To be <laughs> honest, I'm. Uh, I have my business here. We live in. I live in Poland. Mm -hmm. But um, since day one, we moving here. When we we, we open the doors in our our business, mm -hmm. the communities really support us a lot. Yeah. So we try do everything is possible to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, yeah. yeah. And you'll be able to make the meetings? Yes, just let me know. <laughs> okay. so yeah, we just thing. only block one yeah. block away from. Yeah. And I mean we can do um you know, Zoom, right? That's still an option if people, you know. Yeah. Zoom is an option for meetings if mm -hmm. you can't make it into town. Okay. All right. Okay, good then. Thank Thanks. you, Juan. Thank you. Okay, so there are uh, an open position, right? There's two open positions. Two. So um, you have three applicants. Mm -hmm. You make a recommendation to city council. Uh, ultimately, city council will be who selects the applicants. Sure. So. Okay. Okay. And do we make that recommendation today? Yes. Okay. Do we so I make a motion that we uh, recommend the three applicants to city mm -hmm. council? You have 
two positions. Oh, two positions. So okay. you need to pick two applicants for those positions. While they're sitting here? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was getting at. I was like, do we get to discuss this or? <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> I, I think that well, the motion that we can make is that we've interviewed these, we could say we've interviewed all three and we, we uh, if you're, you're, I'm sorry, let me start over. Your motion was going to be to recommend all three, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think what we could do instead is we could say we've interviewed all three and we are supportive of any of these candidates. So city council can make that decision. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. I so move what Bennett said. And I second what I said. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That would be a good one. All right, nice. Okay, so do you want to um, talk about the change of the days and times for meetings? Um, how do you want to start off with that? Do we? Well, are we? Let's start with cha you. changing the day or morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, how yeah. Scott? Because we, because Chris, yeah, so. our our schedule seem to be a little bit more flexible. So. What do you, what would work for you? What's projected for us, for me and Ant Farm with my position is come January 1st, I'm likely going to be, sorry, come January 1st, uh, the schedule of opening the new site, mm -hmm. I will likely be, because students are in school until four now, instead of earlier, I'll be on the job until six, Monday through maybe even Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at possibly not being free until like 6, 6.15 myself. Come okay. January, I'm free and I'm, I've, my schedule is, uh, now that summer's over, I'm completely easily able to make these meetings until that, that time frame though. So November, December meetings. Um, okay, so mornings are out for you. Oh, mornings. Right. Oh, no, I can do. I'm sorry. I didn't even think of that because yeah. that's. I don't know. Head. Right. I mean, mornings so, are an option too. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Mornings are really great for me. Okay. I have a lot of flexibility after after 11. It gets hard because we go into the schools. Mm -hmm. So anything before 11. Yeah. Completely free. Mm -hmm. Except for Thursday mornings, we have our leadership meetings. But otherwise, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Super easy then. How about you guys? Nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, once a month yeah once a month because i you said you're you've got an are you local nine to five are you okay, mm -hmm. okay. 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 so we kind of have a choice mm -hmm. after six or morning I can help with that choice. Uh, at oh, once yeah, you after, guys. Yeah, when it's after, if it's much later than six, it'd be hard for staff to make sure. it. Sure. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. And there are fewer options. I mean, would it still be on a, would it still be on the same Monday, I is guess? There, uh, so I was going to say, if the, if the day of the week were, were to change, there's other evening things on the calendar we'd have to work around, but mm -hmm. a morning meeting would be mm -hmm. much easier to schedule yeah. the chambers for. Yes. Okay. Once a month, Chris, could you um, stay till, like, could we do tw uh, 10 to noon? Um, 10 to noon once a month would be, I could make the majority of them. I could not make all of them. Is nine to eight? No, or no, just, I um, just, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay either way. Mm -hmm. Changing it to morning is worth a shot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, keep the Mondays. Mondays are good. Mm -hmm. And just change the time. Yeah. yeah. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Start time to nine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then your your yeah, meeting you zoom. next month would be Monday at nine a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So what for you guys on, on the first Mondays? Yeah. Okay. First Monday of the month. What's the first Monday of December? 
It I is <laughs> the December 5th. Okay. Yeah, we're good. I leave on the 8th for Panama. So. Okay. Okay. Do we need to make a motion for that or just agree? I think I think you can just reach consensus on that. Okay. So Do you want to, since we're talking about kind of overall logistics, do you want to use this time to talk about co-chairs? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about me and Bennett it being a co-chair. Okay. And how does that work? The Arts Commission has co-chairs right now. Okay. Um, it, it's it's fine. I will say that uh, there's... There, we, I'm going to ask you to select one person to be the communications person because with records retention, we're going to be switching over emails next month. So each committee will have its own email and one person needs to be in charge of that in order for records retention. So generally speaking, we're asking that the chair be in charge of that. And if there's co-chairs, one person be the person in charge sure. of that. So that is for your external communications. Mm -hmm. So if, if the committee is emailing outside agencies or talking mm -hmm. to other people, then you'll use that email in order to retain the records. Okay. Cool. We're fine with that. Okay. Yeah. So is it would they need to decide who's that role then tonight also? in that process or do they just decide between themselves they can decide between themselves as long as they let me know before november 1st so that when i set up the emails okay. or when it sets up the sure. emails yeah, yeah. I, I know who to who to have them send the login information to okay but right. if you want to do co-chairs you will need somebody to make a motion and vote okay i'll make the motion for co-chairs i second well you guys have to say who oh, yeah okay. i read i I recommend that uh, Hannah and Bennett be our co-chairs for our motion to make that suggestion. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Chair. Strategic planning. Why don't you let me? Yeah, okay. So we had a subcommittee meeting in September. And the purpose of the subcommittee was that we were, well, two things happened. One is we had a meeting in August that we did not have a quorum. And because of that, we basically did nothing at that meeting. No decisions were made because we didn't have a quorum to vote on anything. Um, so we felt like going an additional month without having any sort of um, progress toward the budget and toward the goals for 22-23 was um, not a good idea. And so we went ahead and appointed as a uh, subcommittee to make some recommendations on how to spend the money that we have in the budget and also um, what projects we would recommend for the 22-23 um, fiscal year. And those are contained on the memo that says, the very last page. No, no the one, one page. that we're the one we want looks it's like this. It's a table. Yeah. The yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Do you guys have these things? No. Okay. Um. And uh, so. We started with volunteer recruitment. Uh, we think that uh, we need, um, per the Main Street program, there are two things that that uh, they really emphasize, and one is to have a pretty robust and um, and uh, engaged volunteer team or groups of people. And so we would we actually think that that's worth spending some money on. And we are hoping that uh, staff will be able to dedicate some time to maybe going to some of the places like senior centers, doing some advertising, which is what the budget would be for, um, maybe advertising the newspaper, advertising on social media, 
And uh, so that we set aside $500 for that. The newspaper submission is something that we've already started, but we would like to be more involved in that. So we would like a monthly article, article submitted to the newspaper and um, that highlights the downtown Estacada Commission activity. So in other words, um, we want to have our activities and things that this commission is doing uh, be more publicized in the community. We think that um, that that will do two things. One is that the community will be more engaged with us and also that it may be easier for us to attract and keep volunteers as a result of um, the people in the community being able to see what it is that we are achieving. So uh, once or twice a monthly e-newsletter, uh, e and that's already again in progress. Um, we would like to see that the DEC is more involved in that. The staff has done a wonderful job of taking on the newspaper and the, the uh, e-newsletters, and uh, we're very happy about that, but we would like to um, be more engaged as a commission with the, those activities. So social media, um, I'm not 100% sure where that stands right now, but we thought that it would, uh, we would like to have a more active, um, a more active engagement in social media. And all of these things, not all of them, but the newspaper, the e-newsletter and the social media other than staff time are zero budget um, impact. So the bigger project that we're <laughs> proposing is the door hangers. And that would be once or twice a year, depending on how much money, how far we can make the money stretch. And what that would be are packets that are contain information about the businesses that are available in the downtown core, the activities that go on, a calendar of events, um, and uh, request for volunteers, all kinds of things in those packets. And um, they, they would be delivered to door handles on people's front doors. Also water bill inserts and the main uh, cost for that is uh, for the printing of them, but we would like to have um, water bill inserts that basically are this uh, an abbreviated version of the door hangers with the calendar and invitation to volunteer and um, ways to get involved. And uh, that would happen once or twice a year again. Estacated newspaper insert. So the newspaper paper, you can actually pay to have inserts put in. Um, it would be probably the same publication that we put in the water bill, but would be inserted into the newspaper. We've set aside uh, a proposed $1,000 for that. And then the events that we have scheduled or that we are proposing, I'm sorry, um, Fourth of July Parade, as always, um, the Harvest Fest and Oktoberfest may be something that's combined. And so Oktoberfest would be a new, would, would be uncorked, kind of morphed into a different uh, event. And we're kind of excited about that idea. But there's no budget impact on that because those events are after the uh, the next fiscal year. And, and then we have the letters that we have mentioned before. There's two letters that we drafted and that is one of the um, activities that we're proposing for 2022 and 23 is the recommendations to city council. And we'll be discussing, I guess, those letters later on this evening. So those are the goals that our subcommittee is proposing to the DEC for adoption as part of the strategic plan. I wanna clarify a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, one is that uh, staff tasks are assigned by her by supervisor. The, the DEC can request it from her supervisor, but the DEC cannot assign tasks to Mara. We're aware of that. Okay. And then um, you're missing uh, the tree lighting, which has been traditionally a downtown Estacada commission event. 
So we're not really clear about whether or not tree lighting is in our, yeah. yeah. And we discussed that. Okay. I mean, it has been, except for, you know, when COVID hit. So when COVID hit, it was kind of like downsized. But prior to that, it was a DEC it event. Seemed like it was a combination of EDA and the chamber and the city all doing different things. Mm -hmm. So you want to... Um... Oh, Joel. Let Joel, speak. He's got his hand raised. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just got a quick question for you guys. Um, the uh, the three thousand dollars for the door hangers. Does that include um, having people that will hang them, or is that just to purchase the purchase it? Because I'm kind of curious how you would get them home. Yeah, the reason that we padded that was that we did want to keep the idea that we may ha have to hire somebody to to uh, distribute them. Okay, just an idea, um, some way to interact with the community um, would be maybe look at one of the uh, sports teams, a couple of the sports teams to distribute those and be able to put that money towards them as a way to kind of give it back to some of the yeah. sports teams in the area. Great idea. It, so yeah. just a kind of top of the head idea. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Um when it says like with the zero budget for the newsletter submission and the e newsletter that said like other than staff time, by staff, does that mean us as the commission or uh, under the city, like what um, mm -hmm. Elena was talking about with like Mar or someone else being asked mm -hmm. to participate in that, mm -hmm. that staff time? Yeah. Okay. And then the social media um, and even like the newspaper, like it said, like monthly article, like like looking at our events, like we don't really have something going on every single month. So I'm kind of curious on like what we, what you were thinking of putting in, unless it was like building up to the event that month, like if it was May, June, and then July is the 4th of July parade. So you're doing like kind of lead ups to it. I'm just curious. Sure. It's not necessarily just events that we, we, we would be talking about. Okay. We might have an article that said, you know what, the DEC is, you know, an active commission. These are the things that we've done. Why don't you think about volunteering? Or another idea that we had was that on the on Broadway, and I think in other places, there are these little plaques that tell you the history of particular buildings. Mm -hmm. And we thought, wow, those would be pretty cool newsletter or social media things to put on because part of the Main Street program is actually preserving the historical um, uh, culture and, and uh, of the downtown area. And so we thought maybe we'll talk about some of the things that buildings used to be in the past. There's probably, you know, a kajillion yeah, different sure. articles, but it wasn't necessarily intended to be just events. Cool. And then a couple with that, um, Stephen, who's on the Parks and Rec Commission, he and his wife have been working on a audio tour that mm -hmm. kind of correlates with some of those historical buildings, mm -hmm. maybe some that have plaques, maybe some that don't, some that have murals, some that don't. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't checked in with him since I stepped off that commission to, to know exactly where they're at with it, but they were working on that. So that could be, cool. you know, like get people walking around, right? Sure. Um, Social media, the idea behind that is just like pump things out, like short little snippets. Are we thinking like Facebook when, when you guys were talking about it? Are we talking about other? We don't know avenues? that the DEC has a Facebook page. And so I don't they think do. DEC, we do. DEC has yeah. a Facebook page and they have an Instagram and they have a um, TikTok. Okay, so we so our idea is that some of these things, some of these, the content for some of these other projects like newsletter, those things should be hitting the social media. So our, it's kind of news that we actually have Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And so we should be paying attention to that and actually putting content on those sites. So I, I will say that um, because of the way things are managed, you would have to to send all content to staff to upload. We can't give you permission for any of the social media accounts. Yeah, we understand and okay. that's perfectly fine. Okay. And with, with the social media, since those are so, like articles, there's much more content, much more depth into those. Like with social media, were you guys envisioning more of like a, like if we have something that's coming up or if we're highlighting something else during that month, depending on what the rotation is, 
doing more like captions with, uh, or like a picture with small short captions. Um, I mean, TikTok is more video based anyway, but right. again, we didn't, you guys didn't know that we even had it at that mm -hmm. point, which I didn't either, but, um, but even like through a Facebook lens, um, highlighting still some of the things you were talking about, Bennett, like historical, mm -hmm. uh, either opportunities or even stories that way. And then how often were you guys thinking about integrating social media, like constantly, like every month, every week? Well, what it, um, what we said here is one to four times per month. So if we did it once a month, that would be a hundred percent better than we're doing right now. Yep. So. I think once, once a week would be ideal. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's tend to kind of maybe plan in on what we want to post. But unless we identify these things mm -hmm. like that yeah. as goals for 22, 23, we probably will go another year without having any content put on the site. So <laughs> you just you got my head rolling because now I'm thinking like if we're doing it once a week, at, at, like ideally, it's like looking at us and saying like who, how can we? It's almost like that other subcommittee, right? Of who's pushing out content so we can get to Mara or Elena or whomever, mm -hmm. since they have control of those social media components, because it's going to take time for them to say like yes, right. this is, and it goes in. And then there's like boosting things and all of these other things that I'm learning about with my other job, but just like looking at all of that, like that's kind of and like writing articles. Mm -hmm. like, like if it's us writing the articles, or are we getting someone else who's a good writer to write an article, but we're kind of mm -hmm. pushing out like kids what we'd like? Mm -hmm. Like that's where my head's going right now. It's not that these are bad ideas or that we shouldn't, but it's more like logistically, how are we going to as a committee? do that since we're only meeting once a month. So we will probably request that staff do some of this work, but the thing that, well, as an example, Mara has said I've, that she's been um, submitting things to the newspaper, but we haven't actually seen those things um, before she submits them to the newspaper. So we'd like to be engaged with that more than we have been to this point. Joel, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, so um, as some of you guys might know, uh, social media is nothing new to me and what we do between a nonprofit and and my show. So very familiar with, with that and what kind of grabs people's attention. Um, the first thing is with the one thing to consider, this is a suggestion would be to look to some of the larger nonprofits in the area like Ant Farm, ECW, those things that have a good social media presence and try to work with them because they can help really push an event. Um, and they can probably spring some of that stuff together for you. Like, for example, if you have an event coming up, you give them a few pieces of information, they can write their own articles and then you can reshare those if you see it fit. Um, or it can be the other way around. You guys write stuff, work with them. They can share it onto their page. It get, it helps with that cross promotion and really pushes it. Um, most people don't read more than about three to five lines of information, and that's kind of being generous. Mm -hmm. They respond better to pictures and videos. And um, if you guys are able to do lives, those are things that are going to grab people's attention and draw them in to whatever the event is. So if your ways to to pull to try to track people into the event to what you guys are trying to put out there, that's one way to get their attention. So if you have a, if you want to get them to focus on an event, create a an image that maybe is like a poster image or something that will grab their attention and say this is what it is all in one quick thing that pops up in front of them. Whereas the, the most people aren't going to read, like I said, more than a few lines. Um, and then the other side of it is uh, boosting works, but you have to have someone experience in how to target those boosts to specific audiences and locations. Otherwise you could be advertising to someone over in Beaverton and not realize it. So you got to be very specific on there. And so getting someone that knows how to do that um, is important and has some experience in that. So I'd recommend uh, it sounded like, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the, the person in the, the hat. I don't recognize you. I'm sorry. It's really small on my screen. That's all right. I'm Chris Stanton. I uh, Chris Stanton. Okay. Stanton. Gotcha. Yeah. Say, uh, pleasure to meet you, uh, Commissioner Stanton. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I think you said something about you doing it for a job. So he might be someone good to work with uh, targeting audiences. And if not, it might be worth reaching out to somebody that's done that 
that can like a like a consultant to give you guys some good tips and advice on that if the staff and city staff might know it as well that's just some advice is based on hard lessons that we learned over time but um yeah so that's a couple of things images videos lives and uh if definitely if possible try to work with some of the local nonprofits that people are constantly looking at like i said and farm ecw things like that to get things re recross posted and boosted that that'll really help a lot for you so we're not actually proposing a budget for um, social media for this 22 23 year for boosting or anything what we are focused more on is getting the mechanics of regular posting down. Once that's in place, then um, then we can move to the next step. Yeah, so um, thanks Joel for sharing that. I just wanted to show the Facebook page and usually when I've made posts, I, I make it so that it posts both on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's nice we are able to like schedule when to post it and all of that but usually they go up at the same time on both platforms so as you can see um what I did do for harvest festival we had several posts for that um and it was exactly as Joel was saying like an image with just a little bit the pertinent information maybe there's more information in the the post itself but uh the main eye-catching thing is an image so I just wanted to show you all that um, and we put pictures up after the event as well. Um, so these are just some examples, but the promotions for the event, again, not too many words, a lot of images. So if this is something that the DEC wants to take over, which is great, and I know that's something that um, Arts Commission does a lot too, is send us you know, their, their posts and we just put that up. So it doesn't have to be anything too complicated, just really these sort of simple things. Um, I will say with the newspaper articles, I'm not really able to send those before sharing it because of all the time, like before sending it over to the newspaper because of the timelines um, and or deadlines, excuse me, that they have. And I wouldn't be able to get like everyone's feedback. Obviously, decisions wouldn't be made due to the whole public meeting nature and all of that. However, if one of you or all of you are interested in writing up submissions, I'd be happy to then send those over to the newspaper. So that's when we did the strategic plan, that's actually what we were doing is I was writing the uh, newspaper submissions and I was, um, and the intent was, and also, um, the uh, newsletters, the e-newsletters. So I was doing both of those things and the intent was to get those things going and then hand that off to staff. And so the result of that was that we kind of got disengaged from the those two activities, the e-newsletter and the um, newspaper submissions. So I'm happy to to start that again but we're look we're looking at how can we sustain these activities over time? How can we set up a mechanism that makes sure that we have uh, fresh social media, fresh newspaper submissions, fresh um, I, things that are going into the e-newsletter so that people don't just delete it before they even open it. And um, but that said. Um, the conversation that we're having today is around these um, these proposals for goals. How we actually do all this stuff is probably a conversation for a different time. When when you say how you do it, it does that include then like kind of delegating the tasks and yeah, who's to... gonna who's gonna do what and you know how are we gonna actually get content to put into these things? All those things need to be hammered out. I mean, kind of uh, action steps uh, attached to each one of these goals. But these are the goals that our subcommittee is recommending for the twenty two twenty three year. Okay, along yeah, with gonna... the budgetary numbers. Right. 
I do wonder, um, is, is that decision for delegating tasks something you want to hold off for a whole nother month? Or is that something that like the subcommittee will discuss? Are you all going to volunteer for specific tasks? I'm just thinking if you want these things accomplished, then that decision maybe would be something you'd want to make sooner rather than later. Did you get all that? Did you hear everything she said? No. Yeah, we didn't can, hear everything clarify. that you said. I can Mara. clarify what yeah. she said. She said, do you want to wait to delegate tasks to the next meeting because you have a month pass by? Or do you want to have a subcommittee formed to help decide who's going to do each task? Or is this something that you're going to decide, you know, each person is going to volunteer for a task? She doesn't want, she wants to make sure that you guys figured that you're staying on schedule for these tasks by making sure that they have a person, a, a committee member assigned to each task. So is that something you're going to want to put on the next agenda or do you want it done before then? And to add to that, I think the city, myself and Melanie specifically, are going to need to know what staff time is being requested for what and be able to say yes or no to those things. Mm -hmm. Right. So the way I see this going is that if these goals are acceptable to us, that we would have a motion to accept these goals for 22-23. And then if we want to have discussion afterwards regarding who does what or whatever, but the first step would be to discuss whether or not these are appropriate goals for the 22-23 so if we pass those and we find out later on that we don't quite have the staff support that we would require, then certainly we could go back to the table and say, you know what, we're going to have to push this one out a little bit. But the re reason that the subcommittee put together this list was to submit it to the commission for approval to the strategic plan. No, I, can I ask a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Is this to replace your project plan that you had already approved for the 22-23 fiscal year? Because there are things in your project plan right. that are not included on this. Right. Right. These are the projects that we are proposing that we do for 22-23. Okay. Anything else that is in the plan in the strategic plan. So if we actually adopted 2223 goals, then I missed that. Yeah, you you when we did the budget discussion, we moved forward last year's plan because there was many things on that plan that weren't going to be able to be continued be finished last okay. year and that was in March, I believe. Okay. And so is this is this instead of This would be replacing that. Okay. I think I think what we've listed here is more attainable than what we had in this huge thing. Yeah, I, I yeah, want to make sure you're not planning on doing both. No, no, no. Because that is no, that is not no, attainable. No, no, I think this is something that we could attain. Yeah. So I prefer that we did replace the this better start. With this. Yeah. My my question for you comes down to the event side of things. So we have the three and the potential tree lighting, and then we can discuss that. Mm -hmm. As we move forward, if we're saying yes to this plan, like this as our goals, are we able to add to that particular event list? You wanna do more events? Uh, more is not always on my priority list. Okay. Because I was going to say, it's about 200 hours of staff time right. for, for Harvest Festival and Uncorked. How yeah. many? 200 hours. Really? Yes. Well, we'll have to dive into what that actually was, what that staff time looked like. Mm -hmm. But back to your question, um, we... We, uh, one of the things that we had quite a bit of talk about in our subcommittee was our ability to get people to do things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anytime that you have a strategic plan and you have goals, there's always an opportunity to go back and say, hey, was that the right goal or should we do something else? Th that's always an, an available conversation. But this, um, I think that, uh, 
even doing Oktoberfest will be aggressive for us to actually launch an entirely new um, event that doesn't have a blueprint already in place. But that having said all of that, yeah, we could go back and talk about adding, but we're pretty concerned about being able to pull off this. Right. So yeah. the, my question arises more from not more necessarily because we already have our plates full, mm -hmm. um, but looking towards the future again, not like, again, this is says 2023, that's a full year. But in that year, in that mindset of thinking forward, doing something that's not the same as one of these, mm -hmm. a different. So looking at the different communities that are moving into Estacada, what is going to draw them in different age groups, um, things along those lines and being able to say like Harvest Festival, 4th of July Parade, um, those are kind of staple events that the community expects and knows here in, in Estacada. However, there are also things that could draw people downtown that are not these because of age and potential interests that are these don't hit. And so that's where my kind of like flag goes and says, could we do something different, not necessarily more? And I'm not saying take this off, mm -hmm. but for years to come, um, knowing that it takes a lot of time, but also looking at it going, is this still representative of our community? If, if this is what they want and only what they want for downtown and it, or is that the best way to draw them into downtown? This is a question, it's not so much a critique, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, so. Do you, I know this is just a comment, do you have like in in mind or are you just kind of just? No, I mean like there's yeah, always gonna be like personal bias, right? Like mm -hmm. in the sense of like, what would I love to see? I'm right. a community member, but more along the lines of being curious in the next year again not replacing but in the next year using some of these different strategies to get feedback on what the community would like to see in this space because our i mean i'm new too i'm only four years in here but in those four years it's grown two thousand almost people out of three thousand that started like it's we're booming and those families and those people they might be just coming here to live and then work out um, side, but I'm curious. It's like I'm partnering with other organizations and other things like that sometimes. I mean, like the run comes in, they do an event. That's, mm -hmm. we don't sponsor that, yeah. right? But there's an event there and that draws a pretty big crowd outside of Estacada into Estacada. Right. Those are kind of the things I'm curious about for, and I don't know if that's under our umbrella or if that's, a different component to our city and our different commissions. But I, I'm hearing with Yvonne, like the idea of tourism and like bringing people in during specific months. Estacada has a bandwidth, they have a, a capacity in which they'll spend money and, and do whatnot. And so I'm looking to see if we can potentially create something that draws more outside that is us sponsored or us designed. So for me, it's not, again, take these off, but is in the goals, that would be something that I would love to see us working on potentially in the 2022-23 year to think about. So just, just in another other. Con consider other consider options. Other yeah. But just like with what Bennett was saying, is like if we don't put something down, then we're probably not going to do it. We're, mm -hmm. we're not going to be striving towards it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I would like to see events that draw more of our outside community in to bring more. When we think about businesses, more of that wealth from outside <clears throat> in versus always tapping our own people, but still doesn't exclude them, I guess. I know the first year we did Uncorked, everybody was so excited. We have we had a tremendous amount of volunteers and, and people helping out on that. So I think an Oktoberfest um, would be well received and we'd get a lot of support. Mm -hmm. 
And is it similar like with the idea of Oktoberfest, the traditional Oktoberfest mine? Or is it more like just a kind of like new branded uncorked? We don't know. Okay. Yeah. We don't know details. Cool. But our idea was, I think the kind of wine, we were like, I think people need to be more into beer. Yeah, we, that just that vibe. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, we had a reasoning. It wasn't a big reason, but it was just kind of like, this is this might be a good thought. And cool. we also spent quite a bit of time talking about whether or not uncorked has seen its heyday, and and uh, the reason for that was partly was the beer versus wine. Mm -hmm. The other thing was that we were um, last year we experienced um, basically nobody. We couldn't get anybody to sign up to be a vendor for that event. So an Oktoberfest gave us the, in, the ability to shift from depending on vendors coming in mm -hmm. and showcasing their products mm -hmm. to purchasing beer mm -hmm. and selling it at a profit. So and we, yeah. can't, we can't do that. What? I mean, our, our insurance would not cover us being the vendor for the alcohol as a city that the, our insurance was very clear when we were talking about setting it up mm -hmm. for uncorked that we cannot be the vendor selling the alcohol so an october fest would still and, and we could hire we could hire a beverage distribution company who gives you a percentage of scales there's a lot of different ways you can do it but i you know i just want to be clear yeah. that that our insurance won't allow us to do that sure okay okay we can probably partner with a nonprofit that wants to. Yep. There's other ways. I'm sorry. Can folks please speak closer to the mics? Sorry. Joel, did you have a comment on this? Sorry, I just saw you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no worries. I'm I'm patient. I, I'm I'm gonna liaison here, so I, I'll I'll wait until as long as you need me to. So, I just want to offer some a uh, different point of view. That's all. Um, I really liked. Um, what uh, he was saying about getting involved with some of the other uh, organizations in town, because as, for example, as a, um, Elena was saying that you can't, like, for example, you can't pull the permit as a government organization to bring the alcohol, but what you can do is work with organizations that do stuff like that, that can pull those and do those type of things. Sometimes that means that instead of having to run the event, which, takes a lot off your plate you get the you can come in as a supporting factor to other events that are happening for example i'm just going to use one coming up around the corner ecw is doing the spooky walk downtown but draws in literally thousands of people one second sorry my daughter walked in uh pulls in thousands of people from outside of the area i think last year they pulled in somewhere around 2,000 people and had people from far from beaverton coming in having and that was that was downtown um, but having you know a coming in to support them by either uh working with you know uh funds working with uh advertisement working with something that a resource that they could use i don't know what they would would be needed um but you know working something like that would be that the event that the dc could do to stretch its capabilities but not have to put as much effort into but yet still be there as part of and take an event uh, maybe up a level or let it extend further. Or you can attach something you want to do like Oktoberfest onto an event like that or something else going on where it either attaches to the tail or the the uh, ahead of it. And it allows it to ride off each other for advertising and for resources, allowing it, uh, especially if it's a new thing, to kind of grow and be taken to the next level. Um, and therefore kind of helping both the nonprofit um, doing the event and the city to both achieve its goals, with maybe less resources, you know, something along those lines, kind of working with the nonprofits. That's kind of what we've been pushing from the council side is to work with the, the city to work with nonprofits because things can go further and you can stretch those resources. So just an idea to think about. So I kind of really like what he was talking about, <laughs> looking about what else is going on in town. And that's just one way to do it. So. Thanks, guys.
Well, and not to jump the gun or anything, but evaluating the Main Street program is coming up here too. And, and that is actually part of being with on the main or sorry, with the Main Street program is working with other organizations and mm agencies. -hmm. Yeah. Well, have we beat this en up enough that we can just go ahead and do a motion to approve these goals for the 22-23 fiscal year? Okay, I'll move that we approve this list and the corresponding budget for um, adoption into the strategic plan for the 22-23 um, fiscal year. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris didn't say that. I'm I'm still curious. I'm curious on like the the budget itself. Like I'm not saying that I don't want money to come towards us, but like with the door hangers and some of those, I'm just curious how we came up with those numbers. And I don't want to beat it, but mm -hmm. I wasn't able to be a part of the subcommittee because of work stuff. So before I push it towards the city, I want to know where that came from. Because that's we, we're not actually pushing it toward the city. So we have a budget. And we have money okay. that was approved. And so we're just, uh, what we're saying is this is how we're planning on spending it this year. So I'd still have a question of like, like with the different elements here. Like we your... estimated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I, I as in agree. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. So next is evaluating the Main Street program and our thoughts on that and being involved in that. And our concerns, I guess, it started off with. Um, I'm not going to be able to stay really a long time tonight. Mm -hmm. And so um, so I'll just recap why we put this on the agenda, which was um, there's been a lot of discussion about where our budget should come from. And uh, the Main Street program has a couple of things. One is that it uh, encourages us to work toward being a self-sustaining uh, organization and eventually become move into a self-sustaining nonprofit. That's kind of unusual here because we were a nonprofit um, under a different name, and then the city brought it in as a commission. So our conversation that we had in the subcommittee was that the does it make a lot of sense for us to spend a lot of time fundraising and applying for grants and all that kind of stuff? We don't really have the horsepower to do those kinds of things. So one of the letters that we wanted to propose to submit to the city council says, we would like you to give us a budget every year. Um, so as we talked about that, we wondered whether or not the Main Street program is really appropriate for us at this point? Does it, it uh, really emphasizes the historical um, a renovation or not renovation, but um, uh, promoting the, uh, yeah, the, there's a word I'm searching for here, but in any case, maintaining the historical um, preservation of the historic history of the community and we don't know whether or not that's something that the community actually values. And so we thought it's probably time to evaluate whether or not Main Street program is the right thing for us to be a part of. And that discussion doesn't necessarily have to happen tonight, mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to get the city council kind of thinking about it as well. So we tagged it in one of these letters mm -hmm. that we, we, we would like to um, yeah. send to them. And with the historical part of what you were just sharing, like whether we stay with a Main Street 
program or not, that doesn't mean we have to eliminate that as no. part of our, yeah. our goal or no. like philosophy of what we're doing within the committee or commission right. anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. really just, um, there are certain things, that, there are all these components of the Main Street program. We're not sure that all of them apply to us. We, we like the idea of preserving the history of the town, but um, but that's not the main thing. We see ourselves uh, as, or one of the things that even uh, Yvonne brought up tonight is the, um, you know, tourism or, you know, the, the vital, uh, vitalization of the downtown core um, is really uh, an economic development activity. And so we, you know, there's probably a lot of marketing kinds of activities that are of equal value or more valuable than spending a lot of time on the history of the town. So um, these things are part of a conversation that we think the time has come that we should start having that. And do we pay into that? Is that part of where no. our budget goes or, okay. No, uh -uh. and um, we, we don't pay anything to be part of it. And there are benefits that come from it like the grant that Hannah um, mm -hmm. applied for. If we were not part of Main Street, we would not be able to apply for that grant. Mm -hmm. Is that similar to the grant that helped Ant Farm do their building? No. Or is that city? So that was, that, okay. that's urban renewal funds. Okay. Um, the work that was done to Mossy Rock mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, that was, we got $200,000 from the state through that grant to do that work. With the Main Street one? With the, from, yeah. from the state Main Street organization, okay. yeah. So who can we have that discussion with? Who should DEC have that discussion with as far as continuing to be a Main Street program? Well, Joel, Joel's still mm -hmm. on Zoom, right? And yeah, so, here. yeah, great. So Joel, maybe you can help us, um, help us, uh, think about ways that we can engage with the city council about evaluating the main street program. Um, the, the best way to do would be to probably um, either a have a workshop where we come together and we discuss it. You guys bring your questions mm -hmm. um, and we just sit down and talk about it. Maybe city staff can prepare, prepare some stuff ahead of us uh, for us to look and see um, what main street programs have done, what it is, what it involves. Um, you guys work with it a lot closer than we have. We're more about, I think, approving funding is what we've done on our end. Um, plus, we have some new people on there as well. Uh, so that's one one idea. The other idea would be uh, just coming and uh, presenting um, in the beginning of a of a council meeting um, to us, like you know, like basically a DEC report mm -hmm. or something. Allow us, and then we can pop something on the um, on the agenda to discuss it. And then if there's something needs to come out of there, such as um, a funding piece or if there's a, something in an ordinance needs to change or an approval in that case we can get it for discussion and get it moving that's probably the two things i would see from the council side we can do um as you know the council's a legislative and a basically kind of a budgetary type of um body so we we have some things we can and can't do um what would you be, i guess the question would be probably you could better out what would you be looking from the city council to do? I think that we would like to have the city council involved in a discussion about whether or not Main Street program is still appropriate for Esticada and the pros and cons, evaluate the pros and cons in staying in the program versus not staying in the program. And, and all of these discussions came as a result of us having meeting after meeting where we didn't really have enough people here to make decisions. And uh, the last meeting, we didn't have a quorum. And so we, and it's very, very difficult, as you know, to get new members engaged in this commission and then stay with the commission and so with these very limited volunteer resources, counting us as volunteers, um, we just, we, the whole idea of going out and having to fundraise in order to support the budget for this, um, the work of this commission is just something that we can't 
really come to terms with. Mm -hmm. And so there, you know, there are requirements of the Main Street program and there are different levels of participation in the Main Street program. And we're just wondering whether or not some of these, these uh, requirements are a fair trade-off for some of the um, things we have not been able to do or have been able to do as a result. And that's, a, that's a great look to bring it into the city council right there for a workshop yeah. discussion. That, that exact statement what you just brought forward is, you know, is it a, we're limited in these resource areas. Is it a, is this something that's viable to move forward because of that? And the discussion would probably have to look at a, what can we bring forward to do as a resource or B is, can we drop this requirement or this, this membership from the DEC? Um, let me ask you a, a question. Um, just out of curiosity, do you think the DEC is still viable as a program specifically focused on just the downtown area? Or do you think by opening the DEC to more of a community business-based organization, like almost a, something like in a business alliance uh, along those lines for the city would be a better use of this this body here and allow you to open up to more grant op uh, opportunities and uh, possibly open up your membership capabilities just as an idea off the top of my head. So this time I'm just going to tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is a place for a city commission that is involved with economic development. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a place for a city commission to be involved in marketing and um, activities that would enhance and uh, support economic development as Takeda. Over and over and over again, we need to remind ourselves that the part of Estacada that we're actually engaged with is a very limited part of Estacada. So it's really just the downtown core. And that's driven by that whole Main Street thing of um, historic preservation of the downtown core. And so we're not talking about the library area. We're not talking about Wade Creek vintage house. Um, we're not talking about um, anything except for the downtown core. And so, so we're, these are questions that, um, that I don't know the answer to, and I don't think anybody else on the commission knows the answer to, but it's certainly, I think, past time that we have these conversations to see whether or not this is the best use of our very precious very limited volunteer time. I, I agree, exactly. And that's kind of what I was asking those questions. Um, and I, I understand what it's for. And so I think the best thing to do, honestly, would be to set a workshop time with the city council for maybe an hour to present these concerns and questions you have, mm -hmm. and then see what we can work together as, a, as two different bodies to, to come together and see what we can find a solution or a path or a uh, some sort of um, at least next steps we can take so to provide you guys with what you guys need and and uh, you know make sure you guys are feeling like you, your time is is being used uh, fruitfully mm -hmm. sounds good yeah. yeah how do we go making a, and a so time. you uh you are scheduled at the next not this upcoming council meeting the second council meeting of the month is your regular quarterly update to council mm -hmm. and so that would be an appropriate time for you to not only submit these letters if you choose okay. to submit these letters but also to ask council uh, for Elena, yes is it, is it possible do we have a workshop already planned for that time i believe so I'd, I'd have to look at this. I'd have to look at this calendar. I know that we have we have a lot of infrastructure things that we're going to have to be working on. Okay. But what date is that one? The twenty fourth. Yes. Yeah, the twenty fourth. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd have to look at it, but you can certainly ask at that meeting. Okay. I think it's a great starting point. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. got to start somewhere. Should yeah. we plan on 
doing that meeting and and or sending the le, le, le letter? Does it matter? Well, just so I, they see what we're our our concerns. I mean, that's kind of what our letter. Hmm. Um, Let me think about this for a second. I think we should definitely send the one about the hotel, motel, the prioritization of that. Mm -hmm. And just so that they have that formally mm -hmm. in their hands. Sure. That, okay. So regarding the other one, um, the fundraising, you know what, I, I think we should send them both mm -hmm. because I think that it's a good, um, and, and that's, you know, if these are approved because they're definitely draft um, it, because that would be a good foundation for the beginning of that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And so do we have to approve these letters and then how, how do we send them? Just we give them to staff, staff and ask staff. them to deliver. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you will you will present the letters at the council meeting. They will be included at the at the twenty fourth. Is it the twenty fourth? Is that what I decided the date was? Yeah. When when you present to council for your quarterly meeting, so the letters will be in the council packet at that time. Got it. And do you have the ability to? to um, can people attend that meeting remotely? Yeah, all, okay. all state law requires you to have okay. a remote option for all public meetings. Mm. Okay. Just you know, November twenty fourth. Uh, no, October. So, October. October. Yeah. October. Is it October? Yes, twenty fourth. And what time are those? Are they five? It's seven. Six, seven. I, Mara will send out a reminder to the chairs about it. And usually Sadie does too. Mm -hmm. She sends you out a reminder to let you know that you need to present at that meeting. Got it. Good. Um, Chris, do you have any input on the letters or are we going to try and pass that today? The approval of, of letters? That would be my preference to. Yeah. If you want meetings to, in a few weeks. So yeah, we if would you want to include them, okay. we wouldn't have another meeting prior sure. then. Okay. So, um, yeah, Chris, any thoughts? If you have any? Yeah. Did you have a chance to read these? Not this. Not the. Yeah. Um, McCray one. I'm mm -hmm. reading it. I'm slow reader. I'm on yeah. the phone. So the secure control of the property located, does that mean like your the suggestion is that the city takes ownership? We're not being definite about what that means. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve these letters mm -hmm. to be sent for submission to the city council. For submission to the city council. Yeah. Second. All right. I'm All in favor? Who's, who seconded? Was that Connie? Yeah. Connie. Okay. I couldn't hear very well. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Great. Um, if you still on the item of, uh, of evaluating the Main Street program, I did want to share that um, evaluation from that program will be due soon. And so I will be emailing that out to all of you. Let me share my screen here. Uh, usually, uh, this has been in the past, uh, the last one Taylor and Elena did together. Um, because it was a requirement. Taylor that, Gibson, not Taylor Campy. Taylor okay. Gibson, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, they did that together um, as she was the chair. And so as you can see here, it's there's a self-assessment tool. It gives pretty clear instructions and it has all the different standards that the Main Street program is looking at now. 
and there's your score, the local program, and also the national program that gives scores. So that is, again, something I will be sending out to all of you. And so if you want to do this assessment on your own, um, and, and then we will have to average out our scores. And perhaps this is something that you would want to share with council as well in your discussion yeah. of the program and, and whether or not it, it makes sense for the DEC to still be part of Main Street. Perhaps this tool is helpful in that. Um, but as I mentioned, this is something that they're requiring us to do. And so I'll be sharing that with all of you. As a city councilor, that thing would be absolutely uh, invaluable to bring to us that information. So awesome. Is yeah, that coming out before the like within a time frame where we would have as count commission members time to actually fill it out before the 24th? Mara, are you sending that? Yeah, I can time? send that out um hopefully by tomorrow, but definitely by Wednesday, like this week. So you should okay. have a couple of weeks at least. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. Updates on harvest. Do you want to give us a little brief? It went well. Um, you know, for being the first year back, um, I thought it went very well. Uh, we had a couple of other events going on in town that mm -hmm. brought some people in, but you know, we could use definitely use more vendors. Um, I thought it went well, and I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. Of October, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, we did a yeah, after yeah, that, event review and came up with some good things we can do differently. Changes. Yeah. Cool. And that race was the morning of two of the harvest festival. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people, they were like, oh, we didn't even know what was happening. Yeah. Just some state around. Working on marketing. Yeah. And big piece. With looking at the vendors we did have, what genre of vendors do you think would be good to get more of or that there was a gap that we could go after next time? You know, one of the things that brings people in is if there's food mm -hmm. and having a, a vendor that people can grab something and walk around with it is mm -hmm. good. Uh, we had the kids things with the balloons and the face painting. We had uh, kettle corn, but you know, having a, a cup of chili in your hand as you mm -hmm. walk around, or or um, something like that. So food will bring people in. Yeah. But you know, probably the same issue like with uncork. They don't have anybody to to do it. But I mm -hmm. think we just need to um, do a couple things different. I didn't look online, but was I mean we had the best damn run. The morning of, mm -hmm. um, were there any other major events in the Clackamas County that would have drawn away from our event Little on the Foster Farm? They had their cider squeeze. That's always big, um, but there's a way that we should have communicated with them that they could talk about what we were doing and we could talk about what they were doing. And they always do theirs on the third Saturday of September. Okay. The good thing is, is that we right had up Eagle Creek. Where is that? That's uh, right on the corner of out there in Eagle Creek. Yeah. By the across from the feed store. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Good yeah. thing is uh job corps is back and they helped us in the afternoon. So that that was just good to see them back. Well, thank you, Connie. Um I think that wraps it up. Is there any public comment? Probably not. No. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, it's okay. 653 meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You